Hi, I'm here with Lab Smith of In Harmony Landscapes, an awesome Northwest landscape designer, sustainable uh, missionary, and advocate for gardening without chemicals in a smart and sustainable way. Lad, how are you doing? Great, thank oh, you. Good. Give us like three tips for surviving this horrible winter in the Northwest. How, how can people keep their gardens alive and get ready for summer? What's your favorite tip that you like to do? Keep the leaves, on, you've kept the leaves on your lawn over winter. Well, if you kept the leaves on the lawn, you probably have dead lawn, on, I mean dead lawn oh, underneath. Oh, I don't mean lawn, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a good tip, Lawn. Yeah. <laughs> good way to kill the lawn. We recommend leaving all of their leaves and their perennial timber uh, and everything in the beds. When they go back in springtime, we're going to do spring cleanup. It's pretty much everything you can decomposing up to do any work. So you're just raking it in? Breaking it in, or maybe just add a little compost on top of it to help break it down, you know, so they don't have to do any work. Do you have to add fertilizer before you plant now this spring? Um, I would add a little bit because you've got a lot of rain, a lot of leaching going on. So I want to get a little organic, basic fertilizer to get things off to a good start. So do you just sprinkle that on the top of the of the soil, or are you in the planting beds, or are you raking that in? We incorporate in at all times. Try to get it right down by the roots so they can be uh, uh, broken down and start being used immediately. And then what uh, are you doing in terms of um, helping people keep their, we talked about the rain garden, keeping their moisture in their garden and uh, using it uh, to enhance what they already have rather than just going down the sidewalk into the storm drain. Correct. Either using swells or rain gardens to contain the water so they can uh, naturally uh, percolate the soils and recharge groundwater, or even channeling water into cisterns or other uh, underground storage tanks so they can actually use that water when things start getting warmer. Great way to go. Okay, and then um, you need to talk a little bit about sustainable design and that when people hear sustainable, I think they often worry that that means kind of, I don't know, serious and um, the beauty has gone out of it. It has to be this sort of um, like carefully edited garden that has no, no frivolity. But you're talking about sustainable as a design concept. So what are some of the things you're doing with your clients that you're excited about that really improves the design but is also sustainable? Well, a lot of it for us is getting them to understand the healthy soil portion of it. So everything's done with healthy soils. The surface water is a big issue up here. So the rain gardens, the cisterns, everything like that can help contain uh, native plantings, uh, plantings to encourage wildlife back into the yards and beneficials back into the yards. So it becomes a self-sustaining system so that they don't have to use pesticides because something's getting out of control. I love your tip also about not, if you love your lawn, you can have it, but just a little bit less of it. And what do you do when you finally get your spouse to let you rip out 100 square feet of lawn? We want people to plant food if they can. You know, let's turn it into a truly sustainable environment where we're feeding ourselves, getting children back out there to pick berries or uh, pull carrots out of the ground. That's so fantastic. that really becomes a sustainable system. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much, Lad Smith of In Harmony Landscapes, and I will put this on my website and wow. my blog. Thank bye, you. bye bye.